All this stuff goes together. I love what God's doing. I love how he's uniting his body together in one accord, even though we're not together. We don't plan stuff. We don't pre-talk about stuff. We just come as we are with what the Lord put on our heart. I want to start a series this, this month, or I don't know. I don't really know how to do a series, but I want to try. <laughs> I'm just as new as this that you are, some of you. Just as new at um, living this life as some of you. If you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1, starting at verse 1. What I want to try to break out and bring out in this season of power, how we can be and do with power from on high, how we don't have to live our lives like, like some of us have lived them or are still living them. There's no need for that. God wants to give us so much freedom. But there is a fakeness that we've seen in the world today. We've seen it in the news We've seen it just in when we walk down the street. We've seen it with the words that people say out of their mouth. When they say that I'm this or I'm that and there's no truth in it. We've seen that. And in 2 Timothy 3.1, says, But realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. So they will come. And they're here. We're going through things right now. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, Boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, to be gossipers, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And verse 5 is what I want to point out today. They're holding a form of godliness, although they have denied the power. And in God's word, it says, in the latter part of that verse 5, it says, avoid such men as these. Now, do I mean, do I think that means avoid them altogether? I think that means avoid a lifestyle with them, a hanging out party with them, a hanging around them. We have to reach these people. So it's not that type of an avoid it's an avoid to the point that it's going to influence you in the wrong way. Avoid to that point. But we have to reach this lost and dying world. We have to reach the people. Verses 1 and 4, 1 through 4 talks about sinful behaviors and attitudes contrary to God's will. But then in verse 5, it tells of how people with their mouth have a form of godliness but their actions lack the power of godliness. And I promise you there's going to be hope in this message, but I have to go here first. See, even though I'm the pastor of this church, I found out that there were some things in my heart that I didn't even know about. There were some things deep down in my heart I didn't even know about. Last week I come to the church and I don't let everybody onto this all the time, but, but I, I'm just I'm open and honest with you guys to tell you who I am. You guys know me. This is who I am. I'm not going to skirt anything or hide anything or shade anything. I'm going to be truthful always. And so last week I come in, I was just heavy. You know, I've been my wife and I have been pouring into this thing for two years. You know, and it's a load, and we and we're and we're still carrying a load. I still need people to step up. I really do. We're still carrying a bigger load than I want to carry two years into this thing. But God's going to work on that. God's going to bring up and raise up a people that will stand in and take the place where we can't or where we need to back off. That's what God's looking for, that usable people. That's what we talk about when we talk about a usable people, a people that can stand up and take the load where the load is too heavy for someone. That's the church. 
That's how Jesus would do it. That's how he wants us to do it. That's how he wants us to live our lives. And, and Sunday morning, last Sunday morning, I was up here, and I was just sitting there, and, and I didn't start practice, and we didn't even start practice till like 40 minutes um, from the time to start. And I just asked the team to pray for me. Shelly had come in, and she sat down, and the team prayed over us. But Rebecca had seen some things a couple weeks before, maybe a week before, that she saw in me. And I was kind of curious about that because I've not had too many people see things in me like that. There's a lot of people in this church that can see clear through you. You might have a veil put up and they can see right through it. They can see right through everything that's going on. And when the Lord says for them to tell you that, let them tell you and listen to them and be corrected by that. Well, she said, I had three wounds in my heart. And she said what the enemy was doing, these wounds were so small that I couldn't detect the wounds. They were so long ago and so small. And she said that the enemy had his fingers inside my heart and doing this, in my wounds. And when I'm going, ouch, man, this is heavy. It's a heavy load. What is going on, Father? And what triggered this is I had a dream a week earlier. You ever had one of those dreams where it's like it's so impactful, you wake up and you're mad or you're upset or you're something, you're just in a mood because of a dream. And I woke up and I was mad because of the dream I had. I said, how can I be living this deep in a relationship with you, Jesus Christ, and have a dream like this? It shook me and it rocked me. And it brought to my mind those three chords, those three tears in my heart. And so they prayed for me, and we went out for a debriefing after church. Sunday nights we go and we debrief and just discuss what we can do better, what we can do to, to make the church run smoother, and just all these different, um, you know, there's a lot more to this than you guys realize. There's so much more to, to having a church than just us being here. I mean, there's so much, there's licensing. I mean, I, I have like four different licenses I have to get with the state just to be here. Just to play music on stage, we have to have a license. We have to pay money to play music on stage. That's just where we're at. There's so much involved in this. And I was out there, and, and, and um, some of the leadership had left. And I'm sitting there, and I asked Tammy. She's, she's, she's uh, one of my co-pastors. And I, and I asked her, I said, uh, I said, and she also does Sozo ministry, which is a deep inner healing ministry, just is amazing. And I said, Tammy, I need you to pray for me. I said, I got something going on in my heart. And so we got praying, and it took me clear back to where I was four years old and, and up to seven. Of some things that happened to me, some things that I did as a young boy at four, sin that I had committed at four years old that left the terror in my heart. And the enemy got that. Because he knows I've been working on my heart. He knows. Every time I think a bad thought, I'm saying, God, where did that come from? I don't want that there. Or I look at someone wrong. I look at a woman wrong. Or look at a guy wrong. Or have a wrong attitude. I say, where did that come from? I don't want that. I don't want to have that in my heart. I want you to take that from me. And I will stop right there in the midst of it. And I'll go, where did that come from? Let's heal this right now. I'll stop. I don't care if I'm in store or where I'm at. I'll say, God, let's just deal with this right now. And that's what I do. But these three things were just grabbed a hold of me, and I didn't know it. But I got freedom from, man, Tammy, I woke up the next morning. I was like, hallelujah. I mean, I felt like I'd been carrying a sack of potatoes with, the, like, 25 bricks in it and the potatoes. And I felt like I dropped that. And it was like, wow. The load that was lifted from me. And I know a lot of you guys will carry that kind of a burden in your life. You carry that kind of a load because you do not have the freedom that I am obtaining. It's easy. It's, it can come to you as easy as it did to me. I've been working on this for the last five years, literally digging. I'm going step by step, year by year, month by month through my life to go, where can I fix this? Where did I have unforgiveness here? What did I do here? And I'll go back and I'll say, I did this. Will you forgive me? Even if they're dead, will you forgive me? God, will you forgive me for what I did or what they did? See, people can do things to us, and we can do things to people. We can change what we do to them, but with a relationship with God. 
Things that happen to us cannot be changed, but we can forgive. And in forgiving, there's such freedom and forgiveness. You would not believe how much freedom is in forgiveness. It is overwhelming to forgive someone and, and, and you, that freedom that you experience from forgiveness. I don't care what has been done to you. I, really, I, I mean, I care what's been done to you, but I don't care to the point that you cannot forgive. We can sit, we can compare stories, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be down there with the worst of them with you. But I've forgiven. Things that have happened to me that I've forgiven. Things that I've done to other people, I've forgiven myself even. We have to forgive ourselves as much as we forgive others. There's freedom in that as well. So these people, these false people, have an outward display of religion as evidence in the fact that their lives are unchanged. You could take some people that say, I'm a Christian. Really? You are a Christian? If I was to put you in front of a court hearing, and you had a whole 12 jurors over here, and, and, and you said, I'm a Christian, and you try to present the evidence of being a Christian, what evidence are you going to pull out and give to them? Because for me to understand the word of God, it says that we have to have power along with the salvation. Power comes with that. When we have a relationship with God, it says that we can raise the, raise the dead, that we can heal the sick, that we can cast out demons. That's the power I'm talking about that we need to obtain. That some people that say, I'm here, really know you're not here. You need to understand you're not there. You might have said something with your mouth, but not believed in your heart. See, we can say with our mouth, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know how many Jesuses are in another country, Mexico? Anybody met somebody named Jesus? I've met all kinds of Jesuses. We can meet all kinds of Jesuses, but they're not going to have the same effect. So what Jesus are you calling on? What Jesus are you relying on? Why did you say Jesus come into my heart? Why did you say that to begin with? And did you say it because you believed it from your heart? Or did you say it because you wanted something from it? Do something to get something. And that's where we're at today. We've got so many people out in this world that's a do something to get something. What I want you guys to recognize is the difference between a true Christian and a false Christian, a fake true news and fake news. My wife, she's on Facebook. Love her. She goes on there and she does all of her stuff with, with connection. She connects with all of you on Facebook. I think probably every one of you. I'm pretty sure probably. Um, if she's not, sign up. She will hook up with you. And, um, but, but she come to me the other day and she said, Shelly, is it okay if I talk about you? And she come the other day, and did she say yes? You might ask her. No, no, really. She come the other day, and she goes, well, Facebook said this. And I said, so? Well, Facebook said this about this, uh, this, um, this vaccine. I said, so? Mark Zuckerberg said something about what? Um, doesn't make it true. There is truth on Facebook. But there's a lot of fake news on Facebook as well. So I said, you cannot believe it just because it's written down. I mean, I can barely believe a video anymore that I'm seeing in front of me. Amen. There's so much delusion in the videos, I can barely believe it's a video is truth. So if I'm not seeing it for myself, you know, and then we've got people on there that they come on there and they say that, that this, this, and this, and this, and this about this, um, this vaccine that's coming up. I don't know their credibility. I don't know if they know anything about it, so I'm not going to believe them. I mean, I might take it and put it in the back of my mind. You know, this could be true. This could be possible. I'm going on what I know is truth. <laughs> and I know that the leader of this free world has changed things. I just leave it there. I know that things have changed for the good, for the better. Fake Christians are destructive. Philippians 3.19 says this. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite and whose glory is their shame who set their mind on earthly things we need to learn how to recognize real from fake 
We need to learn how to recognize the true from the false. false. A falseness would be, you guys remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira? How they had this piece of land they sold and they said, we're going to get, we, we made this much off of it. No, really, you didn't make that. You made more than that. But they pocketed some money. So they were trying to say the truth and trying to tell these people, you know, and they called them out straight, straight away. No, that's not true. Both of them dropped. Dead. Does God do that today? I don't know, but I mean, I, I know it happened to them. And I know they lied and they deceived and they tried to be something that they wasn't. Fake Christians are destructive. You know, people that are that say I'm a Christian. The word Christian. I had I had a friend ask me the other day about Christian, and he was a little scared to share with me what he wanted to ask me. But he just he said, "What are you?" I said, "I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm a lover of the Lord. God is my God. I'm an untainted version of what Christian is." I'm an untainted version of what believer is. And that's what I want you guys to be, an untainted version of what love is. Because people, when they say that, the deity of Jesus Christ is diluted so much that it's almost worthless in that sense, the way they say it almost dilutes the power and the name behind Jesus Christ to nothing. We can't do that. We can't live like that anymore. We can't live like that any longer. We can't walk in this type of a lifestyle any longer. I said a while back, I said, how many of you ever step in dog dung? We'll say dung. How many of you ever stepped in dog dung and left it on your shoe? Did you leave it on there, Bob? No, you got the stick and you scraped it all off your foot. Why? Because you didn't want to smell like dung the whole day. But some people sit in their stuff and they smell. And they smell like that dung. And they smell like the sin of the world. Yet they don't even want to walk away from it. They don't want to walk out of it. They don't even know. Some of them don't even know and realize. And some of them comes up and says, man, you stink. No, I don't. Yeah, you really do. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. I'm a Christian. No, you're not. And I want to say this lightly. I want to let you know, people can be a Christian and have hardships. People can be a Christian and go through things and have struggles and even fall short of the glory of God. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that I do not believe that you can live a full lifestyle for God and for the enemy. You cannot live a lifestyle of sin, live and knowingly, willingly live in a lifestyle of sin and say, I'm a Christian. You can't do it. It just don't mix. It ain't going to happen. It just don't work. You cannot do that. For it's by grace you have been saved through faith. And not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of your works that anyone should boast. That's in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. So this here. You see, what, what is this? A diamond. That you guys all recognize that as a diamond. Isn't it beautiful? It's worthless. I mean, it's valuable to me. I don't know how much Sheila paid for it, but um, how much did you pay for this, Sheila? It was given to you. A free gift. Sheila gave me this like a year, a year ago, I think. It was, it was crazy. I have, I've had it in my office. I've had it in my office. And, and I was looking at it this morning. I said, man, I could use that. This here... Man, if this was real, we would all be going out to eat today, and it wouldn't be a cheap restaurant. Um, but it's not. But you guys said, you looked at it, and you said it's a diamond because it looks like a diamond. But it has no value. When we say we're a Christian and we're not, this is what we look like. But we have no value. We have no power. This cannot buy one thing. Well, maybe it can buy, I don't know. Somebody might give me a dollar for it. I don't know. But this, it can't buy anything because it's fake. We have to have the true power, the true things in our life that's valuable, that's worth something. And that's the love of God, the power of God, 
the strength of God, the glory of God, the goodness of God, the peace of God, the grace of God. That's what we have to have in our lives. We have to have these things in order to sustain. We cannot continue to live in the sin that we're living in. We just can't do it. We cannot do it. And I want you guys to know that, that if you are there, it's okay because there's a way out. Jesus is the way out. Salvation is the way out. Confessing with your mouth, believing in your heart is the way out. We can have eternal life. We can seal that today. We can make that a sealed deal today. Having Jesus come into your life, live in your heart, be in your mind, your will and emotions, and just clear everything up and clean everything up in you. We can have that today. But you know what? Once you get that, this is the big thing. Once you get that, we have to learn how to use that. It's not that we just go, we get saved, and like I said before, and then we just sit on the sidelines. I'm saved, now what? Pack your bags, ready to go, when are we going to go? No, my goodness, go out in the street. That's where you're supposed to go. Unpack the bag, take the clothes, and give it to someone out in the street. That's what you do. You unpack the bag. You ain't taking nothing with you when you go anyhow. So give it all to someone else if you're going to pack them, sit in a bag. But I want you guys to know that Jesus is so in love with you that he wants such a relationship with you. That he wants to give you power from on high. In Luke 24 says this, Behold, I send a promise from the Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Tarry in the secret place until you are endued with power from on high. I don't care if you have to come up the altar and you have to stay here and you have to say, Jason, I need you to lock up like about 4 o'clock because i got a bunch of stuff to go through. I'll lock up at 4. I'll stay here with you till 4 or 5 or whatever it's going to take because we need to stay in that place until we are endued with power from on high. Now, in my seeking God, I'm not seeking power. I'm seeking relationship. And through that relationship, I will have power from on high. I will be able to change things when I walk into the room. Matter of fact, I'll tell you, I do change things when I walk into a room. Not being boastful in any way, but when I walk into a room, environments change. Because I'm there, and I have Jesus Christ in me, and he is there with me. Things have to change. I've literally walked down the aisle of the grocery store, and I've seen people turn around to look at me because they felt something from me. And it wasn't bad. It was good. They felt God in me. And I know they wanted to reach out and grab it. And there's times I have really turned around and prayed with people. There's times I've seen them and I've walked and I've seen them. Because, you know, I don't always pray with everyone that I see that's got a limp. But there's some I do. And I walk and I see they got a limp or something going on. And I'll just stop and I'll say, hey, is there anything I can pray with you about? And they'll be working at the store or whatever. And I'll say, well, matter of fact, I know I'm, I know I'm going the wrong way down the aisle here. But can I pray with you? And uh, I'll pray with them. You know how they got the arrows in the aisle. You're going the wrong way. And, um, and I literally will pray with them. And, and, and God will heal them right there. Literally, God has healed people right there in the grocery store that I prayed for. Everywhere I go, I'll walk in a gas station. Someone will be down, and I'll pray for them. I'll walk, I've walked into movie theaters before. I was in Florida up at the top row in a movie theater and got to pray with a guy. I'm getting ready to watch a movie. Hey, man, what you got going on? How's life? He goes, ah, oh, not too good. Let me pray. He come to church the next day in Florida. In the church we go to there. I mean, it's just amazing what God can do if we will step out in the fullness that God has for us, in the power that God has for us. So the hope is... If you don't know Jesus Christ, come to know him today. And in that, your life is going to change. I mean, there's some of you in here that, there's some of you in here probably that are kind of freaking out because Christmas is coming up. I mean, is anybody like kind of in a little bit of a Christmas is coming up? You know, I, I'm like struggling, battling, you know. Some of you because emotional things, because you've, you lost loved ones and they're not here for Christmas. This will be my first Christmas without my mom. So it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. I know she's rejoicing in heaven, so that's awesome. And um, so, but, but 
still, it's going to be it's going to be a time, you know, that I'm going to have to go through and get through and, and deal with. Um, and I know some of you go through that. Some of you have lost loved ones, and you're not going to be able to share this Christmas with them. But know where they are. Know they're in a better place. Know they're in a great place. There's no more pain, no more suffering. The hope is in that. Rejoice that they're where they are. But some of you are like freaking out because Christmas is coming up. Because the truth is, kids, Christmas is not about gifts. It's really not about toys and gifts and all these things. It's about Jesus Christ. Let me tell you guys something. You know, you got these little manger scenes, and you got the little baby, and you got Joseph and Mary in a manger scene, and you got these three stinky guys that come, or these stinky guys that come down from the from the sheep, the, the shepherds, they, the, or the, the, what are they called? Sheep handlers, or... <laughs> Yeah, the shepherds, I said it right. And so you got, so really, guys, in, in, the, in the animals, that's the only ones that were there during, the, during, during Christmas, during the birth of Jesus Christ. The wise men didn't come till later to bring gifts. So we always celebrate, we got these nativity scenes, we got the wise men, and they're all part of it. Man, that's wrong, that's, that's, that's fake news. That's fake news. The wise men wasn't there. You remember when Herod sent out the sent out to kill the you know all the babies that were under two years old? You know they were out they were out going around and and they finally found the star and followed him down to Jesus where he was. You know will we tie all that together? No, I mean they were just they just come and, and, and to worship him. It took him that long to find him. So guys, listen, girls, it's not about gifts. Don't put the pressure on your parents. You know what? This is what you can do. Throughout the year, kids, save up throughout the year. All your, if you get money, you know, for like doing chores or playing video games or whatever you get money for. Um, if you get that money, save that money and go out at Christmas and buy somebody else something. Say, Mom, Dad, this year I don't want anything for Christmas. I just want to save the money I have and go give it to somebody else. <laughs> Look at that face. Watch how it will bless. I'm not, they're doing this. Watch how it will bless you. I will tell you a story, and then we'll close. My, my, my three sons, we did this one year. I said, what do you guys want this year? And they said, we don't want anything. We want to we give to somebody else. Well, who do you want to give to? Dan down the road, guy we called Dan the man. He drove in his loud pickup truck by. He lived in a trailer, weeds all around it, and... And he had, if Dan, if you're watching, hey, and because uh, he probably is. And so he had the weeds all around it. He had to, um, underneath the trailer, all these batteries and had solar power and all this stuff. And I remember um, we waited up till midnight with this gift. He'd always wanted a little puppy. It was one of them um, Jack Russell puppies. And we found this Jack Russell puppy. It was the last one of the litter. It was the one that was all, you know, the last one's always the one that's all beaten up, chewed up. It's got all the scars all over it, you know. And uh, so a little bitty runt of a thing. And, I mean, it literally fit in my pocket, you know, because I, I went to the store with it in my pocket. And, um, and so they're, they're there, and we're, we're up till like, late at night, and they're like, Dad, where's he at? Where's he at? And they're all excited because they wanted to be able to give this gift. They were so excited about being able to give this gift. And, and he said, where's he at? Where's he at? And finally we hear that truck, down the road, and I was like, now, can we go now, and it was late, and I was like, all right, we'll go, so we all got in our vehicle, and we went down, and he got in his house, and we said, hey, he got in, he's like, yeah, what are you guys doing, and he said, hey, we got you something, and he, and he, he loved horses, and we said, here's the papers, he goes, is it a horse, <laughs> he thought he was getting a papered horse, so we had like seven horses, and I said, no, it's not a horse, and um, we handed him this little puppy, and man, this guy, you remember this, Dan, his eyes just dripped with tears. I went back the next morning. And he was sitting there. He had this long beard. And he was sitting on the couch. And that puppy was in his beard. And he was still crying from the night before. That's what Christmas is about. That's what Christmas is about. The love of Jesus. The love of others. 
Guys, we've made it all about something that it's not. It's okay to get gifts. It's okay to do that. It's okay to decorate. But know why you're doing it. Know the reason why you're doing the things that you're doing. Because there's truth in that. When you guys get a hold of the truth of what God is doing and what he wants to do for this holiday that's coming up, the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior, that we could be full of glory through him and have power from on high through him, through a right relationship with him, not a fake, false news relationship, but a right, loving relationship with Jesus. It's going to change your world. Kids, I promise promise if you give something to someone else, it's going to bless you more than getting something. I, I mean that so much. I love to give more than I love to receive. Receiving's great, but I love giving more. We have to learn to be able to do both. We have to learn to be able to receive when someone gives you something, but we also have to learn to give. Because this is the greatest gift that God ever did for us is give his son on the cross of Calvary for us that we could have eternal life in heaven with him. Let's stand and pray. So if you don't know, we've started this new thing of kneeling at the altar instead of us standing up here. Now, we'll still come and pray with you. But feel like we've lost the reverence of kneeling at the altar. So I just wanted to take it back to that. If you can't get back up like me, we'll help you get back up. If your knee locks when you get down, it's okay. We'll help you get back up. I want you to be honest with yourself. You might be coming up here praying for anything, not for salvation. You might just be praying for something. So everyone looking around is not going to be looking at you thinking, man, they're a fake, they're a fake Christian. No, we're not looking at that. If you need any prayer for anything at all, I want you to come up this morning. If you feel like you've been walking a false and fakeness, I want you to come up this morning. If you feel like you need more freedom in your life, I want you to come up this morning. If you feel like you need more power in your life, I want you to come up this morning. Guys, listen, we cannot continue to walk in a falseness. We have to be the church that stands up. The reason our country is in the shape it's in today is because of the church. Not standing up, not fighting for what is right. That's the reason our country is in the shape that it's in. We had power from on high, and we let that power down because we were scared of what people were going to say, what people were going to do, what people were going to think about us. There's no truth in that. You are children of the Most High God, and He loves you supremely. And knowing that, knowing that, you can stand in front of anybody, before anybody, and you can say anything. You can speak the truth, and lives and lives will change. Hearts will be one. People will be in love with God through your testimony, through breaking off of all the things that is not of God, and putting on the things that are of God, putting on the armor to deflect the darts from the enemy. God wants a relationship with you. God is asking today for a relationship with you. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone answer, I will come and open up to him and have supper with him. And meet with him where he's at. We do not have to go back through all the stuff we've lived through to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. All we have to do is just turn around because he's right there. Waiting on a relationship with you. Waiting to have a loving relationship with you. These guys are amazing. This family up here. Lord, bless them. Listen, we can use anything as the altar. We can use the front seats as the altar. It doesn't matter. What matters is, is I, I, I just feel like that, that if we get on our knees and humble ourselves before the Lord, He's going to honor that. He's going to honor that, guys. 
if you're having struggles with Christmas, financial struggles, all these things, put all that aside right now. Let's get right. Let's get right so we don't get left. Get right so we don't get left. Get in right relationship with Jesus. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. So much. Thank you, Jesus. He's an amazing God, guys. He's an amazing God. Anybody else want to pray? Man, we've got like, man, I quit early. I need to go back again. I got too much time left on the clock. No, I'm just kidding. You know what's right here. The Holy Spirit does what he wants to do. Come on. Pour it out. Is there anybody else? The altars are open up again. Anybody else? We're going to have bigger altars one of these days. It's going to expand 80 feet across instead of 45. Anybody else want to pray this morning? Anybody else want to pray? Come on. It's okay. It's okay that we've been in a mess, man. I've been in a mess so many times in my life. But I'm getting in less and less of messes as I go. The deeper I get in relationship with God, the less of a mess that I'm in. I've learned how to clean up messes when I make them too. It's powerful. Learn how to clean up your own mess when you make one. God is amazing. Thank you guys so much for coming today. Worshiping in the house of the Lord. And giving him first on Sundays. It's just about relationship, guys. Bless you, Jeremy. Anybody else need to pray? We're going to sit here for a little bit longer. If you take an ambient music up just a little bit, I'm going to be done speaking. You guys can just come up and pray as you will. The Lord bless you this week. Hope to see you next week. Bring somebody with you. Let's let's pack this side of the church as well. We got some empty seats over here. Let's bring fill this side up so we can make another whole group of usable people.